Hey guys, and welcome to this arena playstyle guide for Affliction Warlock. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a quick update on Azerite traits and changes to the default talent setup, as well as covering some of the best compositions you should be running. Finally, we're going to be going over your general playstyle and goals in Arena as an Affliction Warlock. Your current talents should look like this. The main change is now to take Haunt in most matchups as Affliction heavily plays around its one shot via Drain Life and Haunt adds 10% on top of that burst window. As for PvP talents, it's recommended to always take Curse of Shadows for the same reason. It greatly aids in increasing your damage of your burst window with Haunt, Drain Life and Dark Soul. After Curse of Shadows, Never Ward is also recommended unless there is nothing you can reflect. Also take into account you can reflect Death Knight, Shaman and Demon Hunter interrupts. Lastly is Gateway Mastery. Affliction is currently extremely easy to kill in its current state. This means that added distance as well as shorter cooldown aid greatly in helping to survive. An alternative talent choice for when Neverward is not needed is Curse of Weakness. This will help a little in surviving when up against melee cleaves. As for traits, there is only really one option and that is Inevitable Demise. This trait is currently the only thing keeping Affliction at a slightly playable level. You want to aim for 3 of these, and any eye level piece with inevitable demise will far outweigh any other single piece of Azerite gear. For example, if you have a 370 with say Laser Matrix for example, your 340 inevitable de demise will always be better. As for stat priority, aim for haste, versatility, mastery, critical strike, as the damage reduction from versatility is needed to help combat Affliction's main weaknesses. For compositions, Affliction is very limited. There is only really one standout composition that top Warlocks are having success with, and that is Frost Mage, Affliction, Resto Druid, or Holy Paladin. Why this somewhat works is due to the Affliction Warlock's ability to kite, thanks to the strong slows that Frost Mage provides. The general goal of this composition is to simply survive until you are able to build up stacks for your drain life and then you will want to set up a kill window inside of a bash with either polymorphs, clones or fears to deal with enemy interrupts. Some other compositions which are a lot weaker but still playable are Affliction, Elemental, Resto Druid known as LSD. This composition is currently very weak but follows somewhat the same goals as the mage variant. You have to rely on your elemental to keep up slows and help in enabling you to kite, whilst you in turn look to set up kills with earth shocks and drain life, while also having your shaman assist with healing. Affliction is as I mentioned, currently in a very bad spot. It's got clear weaknesses and cheesy mechanics, with the entire spec revolving around stacking up your inevitable demise and then scoring kills with your drain life. However, Warlock has still some very clear goals in arena which we're going to cover now. Warlocks are usually known for their spread pressure. Affliction still has some decent consistent damage which is in the form of your damage over time effects. Your number one priority is to keep your corruption up on as many targets as possible. Each time your corruption deals damage, you'll gain a stack on your inevitable demise, helping to speed up the process in which you can begin bursting. After you have corruption up, you should start getting up your Curse of Agonies. This will deal some moderate damage whilst in turn generating shards. Outside of your two dots, you have three different ways of bursting. This is your Standard Burst, Dark Soul Burst and Drain Life Burst. Your Standard Burst is something you can do every 45 seconds. It involves having your two dots up on the target, then unloading up to five unstable afflictions in combination with Phantom Singularity as well as Curse of Shadows and then using Death Bolt. This will deal some decent burst damage. Your Demon Soul Burst follows the same rotation. Have both Corruption and Agony onto the target, then apply Phantom Singularity and use Haunt, followed by Dark Soul. And then up to 5 Unstable Afflictions. Then extend them with Dark Glare followed by a death bolt to deal maximum damage. After that, put up Curse of Shadows for some added damage. This is good to do early, as it will also help to build stacks up faster for your Drain Life Burst. 
finally is your drain life burst, which is your highest form of damage but requires a lot of setup. For this to work, you need to get all kicks out of the way or commit your unending resolve. To burst with drain life, you must first have haunt if you are playing it, as well as unstable affliction onto the target, as both of these will buff your drain life damage. Then you want to have at least 80 stacks of your inevitable demise and drain life the target. During this window, you can also combine your Dark Soul or any form of on use or racial, as well as your Curse of Shadows. Combining the damage increase from Unstable Affliction, Haunt, and the added damage from Curse of Shadows can take any player from 100 to 0 in a matter of seconds, as Wallerix demonstrates on this unsuspecting Mistweaver Monk. As I mentioned earlier, Affliction Warlock's main weakness currently is just how easy they are to kill. This means that you rely heavily on kiting your opponents to reduce their uptime, allowing you to survive for longer. To do this, you have two main tools at your disposal, and this is your Demonic Circle and your Demonic Gateway. Using these two abilities to kite correctly greatly increases your chances at surviving. You should always have your Demonic Circle behind a pillar, and make sure you have distance from it. As if you are close to your portal, you lose the full benefit of the distance you can create from the enemy team. Gateway is your first priority to get up at the start of a game. There are a few locations and maps where you can get off better gateways, such as Blade's Edge and Mugambala, where you can do a gateway from below to up top and vice versa. Gateway has a 1 minute and 30 second cooldown without the talent. However, it's recommended that you take the talent in most situations so you have a 1 minute and 15 second cooldown. Here we can see Dakroft positions himself max range from his demonic circle, positioned off to the side at the pillar. Once the enemy connects to him, he simply portals away and begins to build distance, abusing the slows provided by his frost mage. Allowing him some time to get some casts off, and reduce the incoming damage. During this time, he also makes his way to the gateway positioned on the opposite side of the map. Then once the enemy team connects again, he uses this time to gateway away while his mage again slows the enemy. Once on the other side, he again makes sure to gain distance from his demonic circle once away, he can then repeat the process yet again. Warlock, despite being weak, still has very good crowd control at their disposal. This is in the form of Fear, Spell Lock, on top of the stun provided by Shadow Fury. Fear is your primary crowd control and can be used both defensively and offensively, either as a means to survive yourself or peel a setup on a member of your team, or offensively to crowd control a healer so that you can prevent healing and help score a kill. Spelllock follows the same rules, however is best used mainly as a defensive to stop crowd control onto your healer or prevent damage. But in some rare occasions when you have pressure, you can look to stop healing to help in landing a kill. Last up is Shadow Fury. Shadow Fury is simply an AoE stun that can be used as either again a defensive peel for your team or a way to secure casts such as fear or damaging abilities. In situations where you no longer can escape and don't have your demonic circle or demonic gateway available, it's time to use a defensive. As Affliction, we have a few tools to deal with this situation. There are Healthstone and Unending Resolve and as a last resort, the defensive usage of Drain Life. Unending Resolve not only reduces all damage by 40%, but will also enable you to be immune to interrupts for 8 seconds. This time can be spent either playing defensive, landing fears, or counter pressuring with enabling you to cast your Drain Life without the threat of interrupts. Halfstone is not as strong as it once was in Legion. Now it heals for a flat 25% of your health, and you can no longer benefit from other people using Hellstone for you. This means it's best used when you're at risk of dying and you need a little extra healing. Lastly is Drain Life. Although this is your main offensive, in dire situations its healing can often mean life or death. 
when combined with the inevitable demise trait, you can almost heal yourself to full if you are able to get a few ticks off. Okay guys, that just about wraps up this quick Affliction Warlock playstyle guide. Thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill and leave a comment if you enjoyed.